Hey YouTubers, today we're going to be doing a wheel bearing and drive shaft replacement on a Citroen C15. It's circa 2001 and we're working on the left side. So passenger side for you UK guys and driver side for most of the rest of the world. Hope you enjoy it. So we're going to start off by doing the wheel bearings. And you can also see on this, which will be another video, that in the CV. That's that side wheel bearing. This is the other side. So I'll get the wheels off. Just a quick overview of what we've got to undo. Track rod end. The pinch bolt on the top of the knuckle. You notice that this end is square. We have lower ball joint bolt, nut and bolt there. The two T30s that hold the disc on. The 30 mil nut for the drive shaft. And then two, where are we? This one top and the bottom one there for the caliper carrier, and I believe they're 19s. Would have thought I'd remember. There we go. So, let's get going. Obviously, I've taken the wheel off. Um, let's start getting this stripped down and see what we find and where we get to. First thing I better do is see if this uh, 30 mil comes out. Otherwise, it could be back on the ground and getting a bar on it. Let's see how the old rattle gun does. Oh, well, that was easy enough. See if we've got any movement. Yeah. Not too bad. Obviously, when you're tapping the end of the drive shaft, don't smack it too hard, otherwise we're knacking the threads up. And that won't be any good. Now we're going to take off the, the nut for the track with the end, which if memory serves me right, is 16. Whole lot's turning, wonderbar. See if I can get a, a bar under that. Who are we going to get enough on that, I wonder? If that doesn't work, we shall have to take a different approach. Now, the caliper carrier and caliper for the brakes. What I'm going to do is force the pads apart a little bit so we don't have to fight too much when it comes to taking it off of the disc. So it didn't need to be much, got a nice gap there. Them pads, got about a third of life on them. They're not desperate. Yep, they're 19s. So bottom 
on going. Let's have a look at the top one. Look at the air tool on that. Top one. There's the bottom. Let's hang this up so we don't have any mishaps with it. Now I've said it before on videos, I've used these bungee straps for god knows how long. But I might just get some big metal hooks, I think. They do just do the trick, to be fair. Next thing to do, two T30s. Make sure they're clean enough to sit in there all the way. Oh, that tight. Too tight, it shouldn't be that tight. Should be something like eight centimeters. That one started. That was tight. One. Two. See if we can remove this disc. There goes the light. There we go. Quite a thin disc. So it was just a copper face hammer. It wasn't a club hammer or anything like that. Right, so I think we can get away without doing this top pinch bolt. We'll do the pinch bolt for the bottom. I oh, know we can't be doing the bearing, aren't we? I'll take it all back. So we've got to do this top pinch bolt. Well, it's this pinch bolt at the top. The bolt has like a, a square back to it, so it just locates. And the nut, I believe, is a 17. I've left the bolt in for now. Now we can have a look at this uh, low ball joint pinch bolt. 17.
17 both sides. Bolt head 17, and the nut is 17. Just spin the nut a bit. Oops, hopefully. Little coats out. There it is. Next thing I do is separate this ball joint from the knuckle. Sec, I'll get me a hub puller. So here's the hub puller set up. As I said, you can do this on the press, but I thought I'd do it this way. Hopefully, it'll be easier, or if this doesn't work, we do it on the press. Well, so I persevered another 10 minutes or so, and, uh, well, there we go. And that's what we're left with now. So we can finish getting this knuckle apart and then get it on the uh, on the bench, on the press. Right, so that didn't capture it on my phone when I took out that pinch bolt. No, the other phone's better. Camera's still recording. So that's that out of the way now. Next we're going to want to do is knock the knuckle. Just rearrange my boundary here. Knock this knuckle off of the strap or shot. Let's see if this is going to want to play ball. There you have it. Knuckles off. Remnants of the old bearing cylinder knuckle. And while we're here, I was going to say, we can see if we can get the old drive shaft out. But there it is. That's just the old racer for bearing. And absolutely. And no better on the on the It's very good. So that goes on the old one nice. Can you guys see this? Yes. Hopefully. And it goes on the new one nice as well. Oops. Now we've got to check the rear splines. They look good. Also, I want to get a bit of metal chipping off and frying in the eyes. 
Right, this is going to have the grinder on it. Bear with me while I get set up. See if that's enough to split the race yet. Probably not. A little bit more. Just gotta be careful you don't go all the way through. That's why you wear glasses. Give it some movement. I see you left. A little more. Yeah, my nice little cut off tool is dead, so I well, should have another one next week. So we're stuck with this old piece at the minute. So just got to be a bit careful because a big old blade on that one. Alright, so now we split that. Oh, we'll be in a sec. One second, folks. About that. Customer. There we go. And no damage on the hub. You see the guys? Yeah. No damage on the hub there. Get the old bearing pressed out the knuckle. So this is the inside of the knuckle, so that goes towards the gearbox. Uh, the old bearing, and you pick that up. That's the circlip. First thing we do: remove the circlip. Trying to find this first now. Got a lot of mud and crud in there. Let's see if it's going to play ball with us, shall we? I may. Let's move it. Let's put it around the side. You may get a better view of what I'm doing on that circuit. Possibly. Well, one side's moving. I've lifted this side up here. So what I do is get a screwdriver and just peel it round all the way. Yeah, so this side's actually out of where it lives. So we can get the screwdriver and just start peeling it round. But kind of keep your hand over it a little bit in case it decides to spring up and bite you. Clear up that 
clear off this bit of crud. So I'm going to press it from this side, but the way these fit, I'm going to have to sort of destroy this bit, the cage and the ball bearing part, and press it from where the, the middle is, because I can actually get um, uh, a, a press in there and push it down that way. Just get that cage and it'll all pull apart. So my plan is, as you can see, to press on the raised part of the out part of the bearing. Now to start with what I do is I have it pretty flat. Oh, this is open for you guys. Yeah, I, I will have it flat there because we have a fair bit of movement here for the bearing to come to this flush, and then once it's flush, then I'll raise it and do it that way. But while it's kind of flat, or on, a, on something flatter, I wouldn't describe this very well, guys, am I? We can kind of like get more pressure on it and get the ball rolling, get it moving. Anyway, let's get set up and I'll try and visually show you what I'm doing. So here's what I've got. This um, press sleeve is just very, very slightly bigger than the bearing. But it gives the, the best support for the knuckle while we get the bearing moving. But undoubtedly, it's going to fight me. Let's see what it does. I know we've got to force it through the, the little rubber on the top first. You want to be higher so it's going on. There you go. Probably have to have a couple of goes at this, but that there is going through the, the little rubber seal, and in a second or two, we should be actually yeah. strike one. Well, I was going to start again, but to be fair, I'm just going to see because I think we've got the rubber seal now. I mean, interestingly enough. This hasn't taken anything. So maybe my press sleeve is too small, yeah? That's what I'm making. That would not surprise me if that press sleeve is too small and we've just got rid of all the stuff out of the middle. Which is indeed the case. That's okay. 
avoid my way, cut those. Alright. This is the kitty. It's at an angle because it's just sitting on the rest of the crap that was inside. I won't, won't worry too much about that. That's gone. That's good. So that's gone. Got the rest of the crap in there. So now we need a big one. It's gone. Now we've sort of done the hard work and moved it. Get one that's gonna really just sit on the out, uh, out, outer edge of it like that, that the bearing can fall into. That one like that one maybe. Must be this one. Okay, let's give it a go, see what it does. Movement. That's good. If it goes solid, we know we're catching on the bottom receiver. So this is bigger. We might just have to be a little careful how we go about it. Make sure it is 100% centered. See what it's going to do. And the good thing is that we did all the hard work at the beginning, so now that's just going to go straight through. Bearing out. Just give that a quick clean up, then we can install the new bearing. So, new bearing. This hasn't got ABS, so either way, uh, new nut and circuit. Quite adjustment on this. It'll probably go there quite nice actually. Don't really need to see the neck, you guys see that? So the press sleeve we need has to be sitting on the outer race. I'll tell that maybe a bit small that one. Um, I think I'll try this one. So it sits nicely on the outer race, but it's not bigger 
than the external diameter of the bearing. So just get it going, and straighten it up, and then we can start putting some pressure on it. Oh, that looks rather, rather splendid. Out now. So what we do, new circle clip in. That was a mess. Make sure it's in all the way around, get rid of those safety glasses so I can actually see. Looks a little bit proud here. Yeah? There we go. Next, install the hub. So I'll sit the hub straight onto the press, making sure you install it to the outside. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but it has been done. Where well, it's been installed the wrong way around, God knows how, but anyway. And your press has to be the same as the inner race. Otherwise you're gonna end up pushing the inner race out of the bearing. Very straight. In fact, I'm just going to adjust this a bit and put this underneath it for a simple reason. Makes it easier for me. Just adjust you guys so you get a better overview of what's going on. So that's a hub, knuckle, that's a sleeve for that bearing. I'll just adjust it a bit, just makes it easier. So we've got the hub, the knuckle, and the press. Again, as always, make sure everything is straight and lined up. And I forget these. I won't get a new pair of these. I can't see anything really. <laughs> well, look, I think they're way beyond their sell by date. 
Anyway, I digress. You know when it's home because you will feel tension on the pump for the press. And there you have it, one bearing pressed in a hub, or knuckle shall I say. So we've got a new drive shaft in. Uh, the bearing's been replaced, so it's just a question of putting it back together. And that is pretty much reversal of disassembly. Too much grief. Minding my fingers. It's got a little tab on the back, so you've got to make sure that you can line that up. Good. I don't know if you can see. Right. Let's carry on knocking this up. That's home. Next thing to do. Shaft in. Excellent. Can you see that? You can't see the level joint now, can you? Give you a bit of adjustment. Full joint legs. And how strong I'm feeling. Let's get this. You all like that. You might need to get this up. A little bit further in. There you come. That's it. So now I should be able to get the Angle on this ball joint. Almost. There we go. I should use a bar really, but I could do it that way. Ba -ba -ba. Open that bolt for the ball joint. Again, as always, check your own tools. Not bad for the 
ball joint still up. Let's go a bit of nut and bolt for the top of the knuckle and when I do it, remember that the bit, the square headpiece, can you see this? The square headpiece of the bolt goes from the back to the front. There you go, check one end. Your nut, a nut which is on this vehicle 200 plus 1 newtons plus 180 degrees. Your disc and this, and I'm sure I've got this in another video, so I won't bore you with it going back together. Well, I might do, see how I feel tomorrow. So here's where we're at at the minute. Um, Hub's on, so the bolt's still up, check what to go on. Disc, cab carrier, all bolted, needs to be bolted up, and of course the hub nut. I've got a new mic, so the sound's probably gonna be a bit different. Hopefully it's gonna be an improvement. on the back of that one. I'll just keep getting in the way wherever I stand. So ball joint and the pinch part where it meets the strap there. Next gotta do the disc. It's not great here, it's right in my eyes. As I said on the other one, these little T30s. Yeah, and just a, a little bit of thread lock on them. I'm going mad.
Now we can get the carrier back on. A little bit of thread lock on these bolts. Yeah, quite looking forward to seeing how these uh, mics are going to pan out. I've not screwdriver through. Yes, yeah, so I think I meant with the gun. Now this is a new shaft, so the, um, the hub nut is different, it's a locking one, whereas the other side on the old shaft, it had the, the hub nut where it gets peened over. Mucky fingerprints off it. Centralise the brakes yet by pumping up. 
very strong. The other side. That's a little bit quieter. All right, let's get it down. Good. Talk up the wheel bolts. Fill, up, fill it up with gearbox oil. Two lots of 90 degrees. Yeah, well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that the video. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified of my next videos, and leave any comments, questions below. Thank you.